Hey guys, it's Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group, and in today's video, I'm going to do Comcast Business Phone and Internet Service Review 2019. We've got a lot to go over in this one, but I'm going to give you a relatively in-depth review from our perspective at Rich Technology Group of Comcast Business, um, their services specifically phone and internet for businesses. Um, so for those of you this, who are watching, this video is for those of you who are in an area where Comcast may be one of the options alongside some others, or it may be the only option and you're wondering, okay, is this viable? What's the pricing like? What should I expect as far as initial installation, uh, customer service, and long time agreement with these guys? So again, got several points we're going to go into one by one, but I'm going to break it down to you for so that for those of you who are watching, you can get a pretty good idea of what to expect if you choose Comcast or if you want to choose them at all. And before we get into this, remember, we are an authorized Comcast dealer. So if you're looking for Comcast, we can help you. But I'm going to shoot straight and tell you what I've experienced in my opinion. Number one, serviceability. And by serviceability, I basically mean uh, this would be specifically for internet mostly. Serviceability as far as their coverage ability to be able to get you broadband internet or for some of you that are watching that are a larger business, even fiber um, in the area that you're in. Let's start with phone and then we'll move into internet. Phone is simple. Serviceability for phone with any carrier, not just Comcast, anywhere where you can get an analog line where there's copper lines or telephone poles or whatever, you can typically always get a phone line. So by serviceability, forget about phone lines. I mean, you can get a Comcast phone line just about anywhere in the United States unless you're like somewhere deep in a hole. And even then, you might even still be able to get it. They can dig. They do have trenchers and things like that. But the short is, is serviceability for phone is a given pretty much anywhere where civilization is in the United States. Internet is a whole nother story. However, in my experiences, being that we deal with all of the phone and internet, all of the internet providers in the United States, Comcast tends to have some of the better serviceability. For those of you who are watching, you may be in an area where the two contenders is Comcast Business for internet, which would be broadband or fiber, or Verizon which would be DSL or Fios. Obviously, DSL is out of the question because it's kind of antiquated and it's slow. It's only an option that we recommend if it's the only thing you can get. And even then, it's still not a very attractive option. But really, the contender would be Comcast Broadband or Verizon Fios. Comcast, without question, has, at the time of this video, better coverage than you will see with most of the broadband carriers out there. It's especially over Verizon Fios. So um, serviceability wise, if you're in an area that can get broadband in general from any carrier, chances are Comcast broadband is available where you are. Um, let's see here. As far as serviceability, Comcast is usually pretty good about construction. For those of you who are watching this that have had to deal with um, internet delays or dealt with an internet provider that said, hey, we can get you service, but there may be construction required, as they put it. What that usually means is that it means that some neighboring businesses or homes next to you have service, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a line already ran to your property, to your business or your home office. Um, so a lot of times they will say construction is required. We see this all of the time. Um, East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, we see it all the time for our Comcast customers around the United States. However, they are usually really good in comparison with other carriers that we work with. Comcast is usually really good about not only covering the cost of any minor construction and sometimes major construction that may be needed to get the internet service to your business, they're usually really speedy about it. Um, construction with any carrier, especially if it's doing something like going under a street, or whatever, or going through, you know, municipality stuff like a street or a water main or something like that. It always requires the carrier to get permits and stuff like that from the city or the county on your behalf to commence with that construction. Um, it can be very time consuming. I've seen with some carriers construction take as long as six months to start because of the amount of permits and things that the carrier has to deal with. Um, with Comcast, I've seen construction get done for minor and somewhat moderate construction. 
within less than two weeks, within about a 14 day to less than one month turnaround, which is really good. So in short, serviceability with Comcast is usually really, really high. If you're in an area, even sometimes in rural areas that are not too far away from civilization, but not quite next to it, you'd be surprised. You can get Comcast. Um, and when construction is required, as I've already mentioned, the construction requirements are typically covered by Comcast at no cost to you, and they're usually done in a speedy fashion. Uh, number two, pricing. Pricing with Comcast is actually pretty good in our opinion. Um, now, I want to throw something out there because we are talking about phone and internet. For phone uh, with Comcast, let's be real. Analog phone lines is a thing of the past. The pricing is always going to be really high in comparison with uh, a voice over IP system. So if we're talking specifically about analog phone service providers, in my experience and opinion, when you compare the per line cost of a Comcast uh, basic line or what they call their mobility lines that you can get from them that have unlimited long distance nationwide uh, for people that need to dial outside of state or things like that, their prices are actually pretty good in comparison to the rest of the market. Um, typically, uh, a line runs anywhere from like $26.95 a month to their mobility lines, I want to say, are somewhere around like $29 or $30 a month, which is actually pretty good in compare it's it's not that expensive and it's pretty good in comparison to the rest of the market but again i want to throw out there that it's actually really expensive in comparison to the per line or per extension cost that you would pay for a voice over ip system um, if we're talking specifically analog phone line service and analog phone carriers comcast prices are actually pretty competitive for phone lines for internet Prices start as low as for the starter package at the time of this video, start as low as like $69.95 per month for 25 megabytes uh, download over 5 megabyte upload. That's actually pretty good. Now, I will say if you're in an area where you can get something like a Verizon Fios, go with the Fios because if you look at the prices side by side, yes, they're about the same for the same pack package, but Fios is symmetrical versus Comcast, it's always top heavy you would see something like a 25 megabyte download over five megabyte upload or a 50 megabyte download over a 20 megabyte upload. The, the download is always higher than the upload. Verizon Fios or comparative uh, consumer grade or small business grade fiber packages on the market are always going to have a better, uh, a better uh, dollars per megabyte uh, charge because you're going to get a symmetrical like 25 over 25 or 50 over 50 or whatever that may be. But obviously, if that's not in your area, in our opinion, Comcast prices are pretty good. Um, while we're on the subject of pricing, I want to talk about their contract terms. Typically in the internet world, you're always going to be looking at like a standard two or three year contract to be able to get a promo that's going on or the best prices that are available. This isn't just with Comcast, this is with most carriers. Comcast typically offers their best promos for people that are on a two year or that are on a three year. Here's the weird thing about Comcast that we've never, that I personally have never understood, but my clients have never complained. Typically when Comcast has a promo going on, it's usually something of the likes of, hey, you know, you want the 50 megabyte download package, we're gonna give you the 50 megabyte download package for the 25 megabyte download package if you sign for two years. Comcast has a three year term, but strangely enough, we always see them want to get people to sign up for the two year term to get the promotion versus the three year term. I don't know why they do it like that, but none of my clients have ever complained because they've always looked at it like, hey, so you're telling me I can get a better price if I sign a two year versus a three year. You would think that they would want you to go on the three year, which guarantees them your business for a longer term to get the promo, but they typically always swing for the two year for the better price. So back to pricing comparison and what our honest opinions are, you figure considering that the industry standard these days is minimum two year for a good fair pricing term, with low upfront installation costs for your service or a three year, um, 
and Comcast usually lets you have the promos on the two year versus the higher three year. I'd say that's pretty good. I'd say it's pretty fair contract terms. Um, while we're on the subject, you can do a one year with Comcast, but obviously that usually that usually excludes you from any current promotions. And it also gives you a higher installation upfront cost. And by higher, for example, uh, we did a contract for a builder at the time of this video where his internet package and his phone came to on the two year promotion. If he signed a two year, he got it for $116 and some change per month, which is not bad for 25 megabyte download, uh, five megabyte upload internet and one phone line. That's not too bad for $116 a month before taxes. If he and his installation fees was somewhere within the realm of about $69 one time charge um, on a two year agreement. If he had have went with the one year agreement, he would have lost the promo on the 25 megabyte download starter package. And it would have probably put his bill, if I had to guesstimate, probably somewhere closer to $135 to $145 a month. And his installation fees, his one time upfront installation fees would have went from around $70 to closer to about $150. So um, most carriers, including Comcast, it doesn't make a lot of sense for you to go with a one year. Go for the two year because then you can get the promo as well as have the reduced upfront installation costs, which for some of you watching that are a bigger business, that may not be a big deal. But for some of you that are watching that are a small business and especially a startup business, lower overhead and lower upfront cost is always king over higher overhead and higher upfront cost. Number three I want to get to is installation. With Comcast Business for your phone and internet service, phone is typically installed faster because it doesn't really require a lot of equipment. And again, like I said, phone coverage is pretty much, you know, it's the 21st century at the time of this video. Phone coverage is pretty much anywhere you go as long as you're not in the middle of the desert. Uh, so analog phone is easy to install because it's pretty much wherever where you can pretty much assume wherever electricity is, you can get an analog phone line. So turnaround for installing an analog phone line with Comcast business is typically some, somewhere around like a week or something like that. Um, internet, which is still pretty fast, typically takes somewhere within the realm of about three to 10 business days to get installed. Um, for the clients that we've worked with, up and down, you know, across the United States, I think I could safely say that most Comcast installs happen within like about seven to 14 calendar days. It usually doesn't take more than two weeks for any of my clients to uh, get the internet installed, unless there's construction that's needed, which as I stated previously, usually takes maybe two to three weeks to get done. But even then after that's done, they're usually installed within like less than a week. Most of the construction scenarios that I've seen, the technician who's doing the, the construction will go ahead and install the internet the final day of construction before he or she leaves. So um, again, non-construction, you can expect approximately about no more than 14 calendar days. If you've got construction, you can expect approximately typically less than a month for construction to commence and complete. And usually the people that are doing the construction will install the service before they leave. So you could realistically say approximately a month, give or take a month and a half. If you've got some extensive construction that delays your installation. Point number four, customer service. I'm going to be honest with you on this one, guys. And I even want to throw kind of a, uh, a little bit of a joke out there. Uh, we had seen back in, uh, in, in early 2019, I want to say it was back in January, February, there was a post that I saw on LinkedIn when I was floating around on LinkedIn doing my normal business social stuff. And I saw a post from LinkedIn. It wasn't from a third party. It was from LinkedIn. And it specifically said Comcast receives a LinkedIn award for best customer service of 2018. And the comments on that were like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, clearly you guys were paid to give them that award. I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me. We love Comcast. We do a lot of business with them and they take care of us, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. Comcast customer service could be better. It's not the best. I've had many, many, many customers complain about the customer service when problems arise. I will say that their service in general is great. Once it's in, it's in. 
But when problems arise, most of my customers will call me and say, hey, Prince, I don't have the time or the patience to deal with these people. Can you just deal with this? And we'll deal with it. Usually we'll deal with it on the client's behalf as a, as a courtesy because that's what we do. Our job is to make your job not phone and internet because that's our job. But I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I feel like their customer service could be better. There's been many a times when I've called them and while they do eventually resolve the issue, I've gotten off the phone thinking to myself, that could have gone so much better if that person just kind of just, you know, got got their head out of their butt and just decided, you know what, instead of try to swallow, I'm going to swallow my pride today and just do what's best for the customer. So I'm just being honest. Again, this is an honest review. Their service is great. Their coverage across the United States is great, but their customer service could be much better, especially by way of conflict resolution in a more timely fashion and without just all of the hiccups and headaches and all of the fluff in between that's unnecessary. Point number five, quality of service. And I touched on that a little bit. Typically, the quality of service is good. I mean, analog phone service is analog phone service. Your service is as good as your phone lines that are sitting outside of your house. You know, if they get blown over by a tree or covered in snow or whatever it may be, you know, and you're blown over by the wind and hit by a tree covered in snow, your phone service is only as good as your phone service is. Now, Comcast is usually pretty good about handling outages from acts of God as far as getting their technicians to respond and handle it. They're very good about that. Um, their service in general is really good. I do want to throw out there one thing that you guys need to be aware of. You guys will have to forgive me. I'm getting some really loud rain right now, but I don't think you'll be able to hear it anyways because luckily we have a nice camera that has some pretty good uh, sound cancellation in it. So um, if you can't hear it, my apologies, but we're going to carry on. Basically, with Comcast, quality of service. Um, one thing that I want to throw out there that is really important is that if you are in an area that is heavily populated, residential, maybe you've got Comcast business for your home office, or you're in a big business park, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Comcast doesn't really oversell their circuits. They're really good about updating their backbone, but they can't really account for over usage or too many people in the same area that are all watching Netflix at the same time or downloading. Like, for example, at the time of this video, you can run, uh, you know, a business out of your home or whatever. And, you know, at the time of this, it's like the season finale of Game of Thrones or something like that or The Walking Dead or whatever it may be. And because of this, everybody in your entire neighborhood, even though you run business out of your home, which has nothing to do per with personal at the time, you're having to contend with all of the people in the neighborhood that have signed into Netflix to watch some season premiere of whatever it may be or, or such and such. And so that being said, you're noticing that your service is really, really slow or really, really choppy. There's really nothing you can do about this, unfortunately, um, because that's just the nature of the beast. Comcast broadband is a shared service in an area. Now, while we're on that subject, I want to talk about Comcast Fiber. The reason I haven't mentioned Fiber much is because most of my audience tends to be of the small to mid-sized business arena, and they can't really justify the high cost of Fiber, which typically starts through Comcast at about $600 to $900 a month. So I'm assuming most of you are watching something like broadband would suffice for your business or is the only thing that your budget can stomach. If you're using fiber through Comcast, you have a dedicated circuit, which is part of what you are paying that extra money for. So you wouldn't experience what I just discussed in the previous, uh, uh, in the previous field. If you're using broadband, you are on a shared service. You are basically just a subdivide of a larger circuit that is coming from Comcast CO to your business park area or your neighborhood where you conduct business out of your home office. So unfortunately, you may see some dips in service during peak times. Peak times may mean um, typical peak times are usually somewhere between like 5 and 7 p.m. in the evening or 5. I would say peak time may be as high as 5 p.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, your time. Uh, but the good news is Comcast is usually good about updating their data centers and their circuits 
to be able to accommodate for new accounts that they bring on or in layman's terms to be able to handle the load uh, of the amount of customers that they've got on the circuit or the amount of potential customers that they could have. Um, I once lived in an apartment complex many years ago that uh, in the evenings, I was in a really large apartment complex that also across the street was another apartment complex owned by another company. And then down my street, down the main road that my apartment complex was connected to, there was even more apartment complexes, all which I'm sure were using Comcast broadband. So I would experience where I was supposed to be getting like 16 megabytes download because at the time when I had Comcast, this package doesn't exist anymore. I had a 16 megabyte download over three megabyte upload starter package, which for a home based business is more than enough uh, internet when it's working. But during peak times, I would go as low as five to seven megabytes, sometimes as low as two to three. If you're experiencing that, unfortunately, there's nothing much you can do. But I just want those of you to know if you're in a heavily populated area, you should maybe ask Comcast or have us ask them in your area what's the load balancing looking like? before you sign a contract so you know what to expect during peak times because you will experience that. Um, I want to talk about, and this is still under quality of service, Comcast is really good if you, if you have one of their routers. On a Comcast contract, you have a couple of options, okay? You have an option to be able to either say no to their router leasing and I think it would save you approximately anywhere from 15 and it'll save you about 12 to $15 a month. If you get your own broadband router from Amazon or whatever source, just make sure it's a Comcast rated router. And yes, you can email or call us and ask us for recommendations on one or ask us if the one that you have will work with Comcast service, because we would know we have the software and the people to find that out. Um, if you get your own router or modem router, that would save you approximately about $15 a month because then they won't charge you the approximate $15 a month to lease one of theirs. If you get one of theirs, a nifty little thing that you do get included in that service is maintenance. They have a thing and don't quote me on this. I want to say it's approximately two years. It's either two or three years. They have a thing where if your router is older than two or three years, you can pick up the phone and call Comcast customer service and say, Hey, I've got one of your legacy routers. It's over this much months. Can we just get it replaced just so that I know that I've got something that's up to date and it's given me good throughput because your internet is always only ever as good as your networking equipment in your office. So Comcast is really, really good about making sure that their customers stay up to date with the up to date router or modem so that you're getting the throughput and you're using a modem that is rated for whatever updates or upgrades they've made in their data center. They're really good about that. There's no extra charge for that. Just call them and tell them you want an upgrade. And if you're over that period that they have classified in your contract of when they recommend you have the upgrade, they'll go ahead and send a tech and just replace it. So that's kind of a cool perk that you get included in the price. One last thing I want to talk about, about quality of service. And I have personally seen this, but on rare occasions, I've had some customers that have had this. There are some areas sometimes with Comcast that will experience outages for unknown reasons, and there is nothing you can do about it, but contact Comcast and say, Hey, can you guys do something about this or what? What I recommend you do, and we'll do it for you regardless if you call us, is ask Comcast, does this area where I'm trying to get service for my business, does this area have any known outages or any known problems with outages? Typically you'll get somebody, if you call me, you'll get me, I'm honest. But typically if you call Comcast directly, you'll get somebody with Comcast that is honest and will tell it to you like it is and will tell you if that area where you're trying to get service is known for having outages. I once had a customer that was in Petersburg, Virginia, that they would have outages almost three to six times a week. It would be during business hours. It would last for 35 to 45 minutes. It would happen over the weekends and last for almost the entire day. Like on Saturday, thank thankfully they were out of the office. I'm not trying to knock Comcast and this is not a common thing. I want to make that very clear, but I have seen this in some areas and a lot of times it has to do with just old infrastructure that Comcast has. that needs to be upgraded, which unfortunately is really, really expensive and also really, really disruptive to businesses that are existing in the area. So 
sometimes those areas just continue to have outages and people just have to deal with it. So um, that's that one. In conclusion, where is my honest opinion with Comcast in regards to this review? I'll be honest with you, their coverage and serviceability is really good, typically no matter where you are in the United States. If your options are only satellite and DSL or Comcast, even if you're somebody watching this that doesn't personally like Comcast or you heard some things about them that you don't like from somebody else, I would still go with Comcast. It's a good service. It's always going to be better than DSL or satellite or no internet in, at all. Um, if you're somebody who's watching this video and you're interested in Comcast business for your business, give me a call. We're a Comcast dealer. I can get you typically special pricing. Um, as well as handle the price negotiating and deal with Comcast on your behalf to save you time and energy. Um, if you're somebody who's watching this and you do have Comcast, in the comments below this video, let us know what you think about Comcast. The door's open, you know, it's freedom of speech. If you don't like them, tell us why. If you do love them, tell us why and tell us what you think about Comcast. Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group, thanks for watching this video and I'll chat with you guys again really soon.